Ionized Yeast presents... Lights out, everybody. stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the terrors of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you, calmly but sincerely, to turn off your radio now. My name, Arch Oberlin. Bon Voyage is the title of tonight's story. In other words, a good journey. Remember back in the days when one could go vacationing on shipboard? Well, those were the days when two old women began this most amazing Bon Voyage. Tonight I'm very curious to see if you'll really feel as I do about the events to unfold in this extremely strange uh, travelogue. So, turn off your lights and listen. First, Frank Martin for just a few seconds. Friends, are you worried because you haven't the strength to do your work? Because you're so miserably thin and weak and worn out? Well, if, as with so many, it's only because you need more vitamin B and iron, get ironized yeast tablets. They work wonders for thousands who only needed more of these substances. Help them gain glorious new strength and energy and five, ten, even more pounds, often in a few short weeks. Remember the name, Ironized Yeast Tablets. And now? Lights out, everybody. Now, are you sure the trunk is tied on securely, Mr. Cab Driver? Yes, I'm good and tight. Ask him if he's absolutely sure, Julia. Are you absolutely sure, Mr. Cab Driver? Lady, so help me. If that trunk falls off, I'll give him a kiss. Now, just a minute, young man. That's your attitude. Uh, Let me warn you, my sister and I can always take another cab. Lady, so help me. I ain't taking any attitude. Believe me, the trunk's tied on tight. If you want to get to the dock in time... Why don't you drive slowly, Julia? All right, I'm getting. Now, drive slowly, young man. Yes, ma'am. I'd at least have come up to say goodbye. Now, Sister Emma, you know mighty well they're jealous of us. Every one of them. It's our cross and we must bury it. Mrs. McDonald. Mrs. McDonald is just like the rest of them in that house. She takes our rent each week, but she's as jealous as any of them. Young man, drive slowly or we leave your cab. Yes. Never should have stayed there. I told you that 15 years ago, when we first moved in. I remember distinctly saying, Emma... We shouldn't stay in a boarding house where there isn't a solitary soul above the status of a prince person. You remember I said that? Ask him if we'll get to the dock in plenty of time. Young man, we won't be late now, will we? I'll get you there, lady, sir. So help me. Well, see that you do. Beneath us. No doubt about it, Sister Emma. Everyone's always been jealous of us. No doubt about it. <sighs> sea air should be good for our trouble. Don't talk about it. He can't hear us driving. No, I suppose he can't. It's been 20 years. Oh, why should we think about it? The sea air will blow it away. Ask him if we're almost there. Young man, how much further? Practically there, ma'am. we got plenty of time. Half hour to midnight. I'll see to it that we get there in time or you'll regret it. Sailing at midnight. I don't like it. Don't talk like that. It was the only time. We're slowing up. Ask him what's the matter. Young man, what's the trouble? No trouble at all, ma'am. We're at the dock. See, I'll make me stop dreaming those dreams, don't you think so, Sister Julia? Tell you, don't talk about it. Here you are, ladies. Got you here in plenty of time. Ask him if it's the right dock. Sure it is, lady. Dock 11. Hey, uh, should I take your trunk off? No, no. I'll charge extra for that. And there'll be someone from the steamship company to do that. Uh, What's your fare? There it is on the meter, ma'am. A dollar and a quarter. Here's a dollar. A dollar. 
A dollar and a quarter, ma'am. You can see for yourself. The meter, the meter. I don't care what the meter says. Took much less time than I thought. But, lady... I don't want to hear any more about it. Come, Emma. Yes. Now, mm. lady, be... Stand re- to one side, rather. Let us out. Now, lady, if the meter reads a dollar and a quarter, i got to collect a dollar and a quarter. Not another word. You question the trunk, unfasten the trunk there and go about your business. But, lady, I got... Oh, I give up what to you. Are you sure it's the right doc, Sister Julia? Of course it is. See? Doctor Levin. Oh. What it says on the tickets. There's your trunk. Come by it to both of you. Impudent scoundrel. Left our trunk lying right there in the street. Save money anyhow. Get one of the ship's people to put it on. No one around. Strange. Everything's so quiet. And just before sailing time. There's a sailor. Ask him to take our trunk aboard. Mister. Sailor. Mister Sailor. He hears you. You call me, lady? Ask him if he's connected with the ship. Are you connected with the ship? Yes. You want to go on board? We certainly do. Julia, look. People. Where did they... One minute there was nobody, and now so many people getting on board. Julia, ask him... Get your trunk this way to the gangplank. Yes, yes, of course. Come, Sister Emma. Don't have to tip on the thing, Sister Julia. Part of the service we get. I know, I know. This way to the gangplank, lady. Oh, got your tickets ready, Sister Julia? I got them, I got them. Walk quickly. Don't want to lose sight of that man with our trunk. This way, ladies. Boats so crowded, so many people. Nobody seems to want to look at our tickets. Well, that's all right, too. Come ahead, Emma. Your cabin, lady. Ask him if it's the right one, Julia. Now, are you sure it's the right one, sailor? Your trunk's inside, ladies, all ship-shape. Very well. Come ahead, Emma. All right. Now, you don't have to tip him anything, Julia. It isn't necessary at all. Well, there isn't much of a cabin. Much smaller than they told us. I'll speak to the captain. Oh, not now, not now. After we sail. Don't leave me alone in this place. Now, Emma. Now, don't now, Emma, me. You've got the same thoughts. Don't talk about it. The air... Sierra will do us both good that way now, won't it? Don't talk about it. There, we're starting. Yeah. All ashore, the storm All ashore, the I'm going out to see a start. No, no, wait for me. Here, Emma, by the rail. They've taken down the gangplank already. I see, I see. That means we're free to the land and everything on it, doesn't it, Emma? Don't talk about it. Isn't it enough that for 20 years... We're starting. Ship's moving. How fast the dock and all the people on it are fading away. Yes. Yes, they're almost out of sight. Julia. What? Did you notice all those people on the shore? Hmm? They were waving handkerchiefs, but... But but they were crying. Sister Julia. What? The, the time. What, what, what time is it? I don't know. Reach over and turn on the light. Ship's rolling so badly. I, oh, there. Mm. Twenty minutes after two. The longest night. I haven't been able to sleep a wink. Why does the ship have to go so fast? That's all right. Taking us away from the cursed land. Stop saying that. Strange how for 20 years a face can come to one in the night. Stop, I tell you. I'm going up on deck. No, don't leave me here. I'll, I'll go with you. Come ahead, come ahead, but keep your mouth closed. Are, are you going to get dressed? No, no, just a coat. Fine, like slippers. Might be cold. Then stay here. No, no, I'll go with you. I, I got, got my coat already. Don't leave me. Come ahead. So quiet. Those... Might it must be the end. Shh. Everyone's asleep. It's good to be getting away from the land. Here. Up these stairs. Huh? Well, can't you see the sign? Promenade deck. Oh. Oh, yes, the deck. That'll be nice. And now, don't fall. I think we should go out there this time of night, Sister Julia. Do you like the cabin any better? You were as much to blame as I. 
the blood. Stop you it. said... Stop it. Come out here. The wind... You wanted to come out here. Where... Where will we walk? Where does one walk on shipboard? Come. He drives the ship so fast. It's frightening. Then go below. No. Julia... Walk faster. I want to keep walking. Julia. What is it? We've been all around the deck. Well? And we haven't seen anyone. It's the middle of the night. But no one. What do you expect at three in the morning? A brass band? There should be someone. Go down to the room. Julia, did did you hear that? Nothing but the wind. No, something else. Nothing. Julia. What's the matter? Over the side of the ship. Uh, uh, a hand. No. No, it isn't. Oh, Julia, come back. Come back. No. No, no, you're crazy. There's nothing. But I saw. Nothing. I went to the rail. There was nothing. Oh, we shouldn't have killed him, Julia. Oh, no. If I talk about it, maybe I'll find a little rest from the crazy thoughts that have been in my head for 20 years. Stop talking. Stop, you fool. Ever since that night, Julia, they've been tearing at me. Crazy thoughts. A fool. A fool. Not such a fool. The thought of it's made you an old woman, too. I'm all right. You, too, Julia. All these years, you've been afraid, too. Will you ever stop talking? At night, sometimes I hear you cry out in your sleep. No, I don't. You do, Julia. You do. You do in fear of him. Here? Why should I be frightened? You help me carry him down the steps to the basement, Julia, remember? Stop it. I'm not afraid. His bones, they're dust by now. Worms to tear about. You are frightened. You are Tell me that you no. are. You know you no, are. No, you no, no. Get away from me. Stop talking to me. Yes, you Nothing are. to be frightened of. We're miles at sea. Water yes. between us and the land. Miles between us and where we buried him. Why should I be afraid of something dead for 20 years? I'm not afraid. I'm not... A... What? What? Look! His face! His face in the sky! Ladies and gentlemen, just a breath. When people say goodbye only with tears, when faces lift in the sky, when armless hands appear before you, perhaps as a medical man might say, a few deep breaths of relaxation are indicated before we return to tonight's Lights Out story. Back to tonight's Lights Out story. Bon voyage. The two old women, frightened, search through the empty corridors of the swaying ship for their cabin. Faster, Emma. Walk faster. This? Is this the, the right car? Oh, get out of my way. Cabin. Got to get to the cabin. Close the door and lock it. Yes, yes, lock it. Can't hurt us if we're behind the locked door. It wasn't locked before. Oh, but that isn't our cabin, Julia. What are you talking about? Of course it is. No. I tell you it is. Julia, no. No, this cabin. Here. Oh, oh, it's locked too. Got to get in. Got to get inside. Stuart, let me in my cabin. Oh, no. No, you'll wake everyone up. Stuart, come here and let me in my cabin. Julia, no. Stuart! <gasps> no one, no one heard you. I'll make someone hear me. Let me in. I'll try another door. Let me in. Let me in. Wake up, somebody. Let me in. Oh, please open the door. Oh, open the door, please open the door. Wake up, somebody, and let me in. Oh, let me in. Open the door, please. Wake up, somebody, and let me in. Okay. Open the door. Julia. Julia. Let me in, I said. It's no use. But what do you mean? They'll never answer it. Huh? They what? found out. About him. You're crazy. Come on. The next deck. Find someone to let us in our cabin. Stuart! Stuart! No, don't leave me. Wait for me, Julia. Stuart! Somebody! Somebody wake up! I want to get in my cabin. Oh, Julia. Mr. Julia! Wait. Wait. They've Wait. got to answer me. Look, look. That room. It, it says Chief Stuart. Oh, I'll show him not to answer me. I'll show him. Julia. What? Empty. And this one empty. And this one's empty, too. Look at the Julia. What? 
What have you found? The sea, Junior. Stop waving your hands at me. Talk. The ship. Terry carried through the night. Oh, don't you understand? We're alone. We're alone. It, it doesn't seem possible. We've been all over the ship. But what? What makes it go? Oh, oh, stop, you fool. Stop. stop. <laughs> Trying to drive me crazy as you are. Oh, I can't stand it out here. The wall's closing in on me. I'm going out. No, no, stay here. Oh, no, let me go. Let me go. No, no, no. You won't go on deck. You won't go on deck and live. You won't go on deck. I've got to get out of here. It's not a fair. Oh, I'm not frightened. I didn't see his face. You did, Steve. Or I'll choke the tongue out of you. <laughs> oh, my neck. That's the way you killed him. That's the way. No. No, you killed him. You. I only held his neck. Your hand was on the knife. You stabbed him again. No. And again. No. And again. No, no. I'll go up there. I'll go up there. Emma. Emma, come back. Not on deck. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Emma. Emma, come back. Don't leave me. Emma, where are you? Emma. Emma, where are you? I admit it. I am afraid. I am afraid, Emma. Emma, where are you? It's so dark out here. All these years we've been together, you can't run off and leave me now when I tell you I'm afraid. <laughs> Emma! Oh, Emma. Emma, you're afraid. Go away. Emma, Emma, we've got to be together. Don't lie there on the deck, get up. We've got to stay together the way we always oh, have. You talked me into killing him. You did. So I did, so I did. But you and I have got to stay together, I tell you, until we get off this horrible ship. Listen, Emma. A ship can't go without men making it go. But we've been on every day, and there's no one, only him. Him, him, you insane fool. How many times must I tell you he's dead and dust? But you saw his face. Imagination, nothing more. <laughs> the night's so black. I admit I'm frightened. Of course I see the thing I didn't want to see. But how could the ship... Listen, uh... and I'll tell you. A great ocean liner like this one, there are men in the engine room and men on the bridge. What if there aren't any passengers? It just means we got on the wrong boat. No one. I tell you, there is someone. Someone up there on the bridge steering the ship. If there was no steering, we'd go in circles. Look. See how straight through the waves we're going? There's no one. Come up to the bridge and I'll show you. There's a man up there steering this boat. A man of flesh and blood. There must be. There must be. I'm afraid to climb. Come here. But how can you know? A man must steer this ship. If there's no one there. No. It's so dark. I can't see. Yes. This is up where the steering thing should be. No, I'm afraid. And there. The wheelhouse, they call it. Yes, that's it. There's windows around it. You see someone in there? No, a wheel? No, no. There must be someone there. Come close, Emma. Look. Windows covered with mist. Look in there, Emma. Your eyes are better than mine. Tell me there's someone steering. No, no. Oh, no, no. Get out of the way. Let me. To the window. I'll see. Ah! Steering wheel. Emma. We are alone. I told you. I told you. No. No, stop the ship. Stop. Where are you taking me? Stop! No, you said No, you Judge up for our sin. The ship won't stop. Oh, we confess. I confess. Yes, I confess. I killed a man. We killed a man. For his money. For 20 years ago. We did it together. We needed money. We needed money. He had so much. Cabbed him. I did. Cut him off. And we buried him in the basement. And no one ever knew. There. Confess. Uh, now stop. Stop. Emma, you heard yes. the whistle. Someone is about yes. Who? I am. Oh. You, the man who took us on this ship. The same, madam. You, who are you? The captain of the ship, madam. Captain? Captain? My unfortunate pleasure, madam. What? Where? If you will excuse me, madam, I must go in there. It is time to take the wheel. But there's no one. How could the ship... You will excuse me. It is time. You've got to tell us. You will step into the wheelhouse this way. I will set the course. You've got to tell us. Yes. What is this ship? Where is everyone? Then why did you bring us here? North by east. Aye, that's the course. Will you answer me? 
Julia. Make him tell us. I'll go crazy. Hey, look, Captain, whatever you are, tell us where we are. Tell us where we're going. We've got to. Where you are? Yes. On my ship, my lady. But what ship? Why did you bring us here? Because you killed a man for profit. <gasps> How? How did you... How did I know? When one is as I am, one knows many things. Yes, you are. Your other question, madam? Where are we going? Yes, where? You go to your doom. The man's insane, the mother thing. We're on a ship with a madman. No, madam. A dead man. You, you're, you're crazy. Junior, what do we do? What? Calm yourself, my ladies, and listen. Yes, listen closely. It's no more than fair that it all be very clear in your minds before it happens. What? This is my ship, and on a night like this many years ago, I stood here just as I stand now. My two hands tight upon the wheel. Julia, what's he talking Listen about? Listen to me. I stood here, and below the decks, asleep and trusting me, their captain, were 500 souls. 500 men, women, and their children. What's that got to do with us? Asleep, you hear me? 500 souls. I, their captain, my hands on the wheel, an empty sea ahead. Mine to make the course, mine to turn the wheel. I closed my eyes, I slept. I, the captain, slept. I didn't see, I didn't hear. A tower, a cliff of ice ahead. We crashed. I crashed and sank. Five hundred souls, and I, their captain. He is crazy. So the captain lost his ship and lost his life and five hundred lives with it. And so we sail again tonight. What's, what's it all to do with us, with them and me? The captain who slept and died made a bargain with the devil. A good bargain to bring him peace and rest. What? On each year, my ship rises out of the sea again. Once each year, I sail it. Oh, Julia, why is he talking like that? I set the course the same as I set it on that very night. The wind, it blows the same. But with me now, not 500 souls, but two. Two of evil like yourself. Well, we sail. My hands are on the wheel. And on and on, the ship it tosses beneath her feet. I close my eyes again, just as I did that night. Suddenly, straight ahead, an iceberg. Julia, look! It's true. Something is ahead. Iceberg! My eyes are closed tightly, as they were that night. I cannot see it. I cannot. No, turn the wheel. Open your eyes. You'll crash. crash. Open your eyes. Turn the wheel. No. Oh. My eyes stay closed. No, no, Don't you no, understand, no. you two? That's my bargain with the black one. Each year on this very night, I bring someone no, evil no, to the no. death. And for each one that dies with me this way, they brought out one of those 500 who drowned beneath me, taken off my soul. One of them for each of you. Open your eyes. An iceberg. Please. We're dying. Turn the wheel. No. I want you to die. You must die. Black one, listen. I give you two more evil ones. Two more. such a story as Bon Voyage. <laughs> well, Frank, some of our stories are based on fact. Some are a mixture of scientific fact and fiction. And others are ghost stories founded upon unexplainable, but nevertheless apparently real happenings to real people. I think Bon Voyage shows what can happen in the minds of people who have an overpowering sense of guilt. Some say that there is an inevitable law of compensation. Who knows? Well, they're all certainly intriguing entertainment, but... Uh... What about next week? 
Well, before I tell you about next week's story, and I hope you'll like it as much as I enjoyed dreaming it up. First, uh, a minute for you. What? Friends, it's a rather difficult transition from the out-of-the-world story we've just listened to to the cold realities of right now. And it's even more difficult after all the words you've heard about buying war bonds to say anything that hasn't been said. And yet, why look for originality in speaking about something that's as real and as close to us as this war? The second front is open. None of us know how long the road is to victory, but we do know that by putting every extra dollar, quarter, and dime that we have in the war bonds, we're helping defeat Mr. Schickelgruber and Mr. Hirohito and company and help make a stable America when peace comes. To win the war and to hasten a fair peace, there is no better use for that paper and silver in your pockets. Certainly, cheer the boys in the second front, but do something about it with work and with purchases of war bonds. And now, Mr. Obler, what about next week? Well, come to the bank. No, oh, that's not an order. It's the title of next week's Lights Out presentation. Uh, supposing a woman came up to you, a, a small, mousy little woman, and said, please come to the bank. Would you laugh? Would you run? <laughs> but find out what one man did. Next week. Yes, tune in next Tuesday again for Arch Obler's eerie story of Come to the Bank. And if you need more vitamin B and I, the big letters I, the big letters IY on the package and on each tablet. 